Okay, I have one now. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to call back to order the Pasco Board of County Commission meeting of June 30th, 2020. Remind everybody to silence your electronic devices, but more importantly, uh, mute your microphones. That'd be great. Um, so let's move on with the public hearing agenda, starting with P1 ordinances. Madam Clerk, do we have proof for item P1? Good afternoon. We have proof for P1. It was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 20th, 2020 and June 21st, 2020. Thank you. And who's presenting? Hi, I'm Mr. Chair. This is Nictarios Pithos with Planning and Development. Item P1, PDD 200560, uh, is an ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending the Pasco County Land Development Code Section 1302.2 mobility fees to increase the mobility fees for multifamily in the urban, suburban, and rural standard fee table to decrease mobility fees for shift defined low income single family multifamily and decrease mobility fees for vacant parcel incentive zone area and other amendments as necessary to ensure internal consistency providing for applicability repeal or severability inclusion in the Pasquale County Land Development Code and effective date. Next slide please. Uh, this is the approval hearing if I'm I'm not mistaken, to accept public comment and adopt the proposed ordinance by roll call vote and authorize the chairman to execute the ordinance amendment and direct board records to transmit the ordinance to the Department of State by electronic mail within 10 days after adoption of the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Kitos. Appreciate yes, it. Uh, so this is a public hearing. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody signed up for this item? No, sir, we have no one signed up for this item. Okay, do we have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval, Jack Mariano. Motion by Commissioner Mariano. Second. Second. Commissioner, Second. Mar Commissioner Wells. <laughs> Second by Commissioner Wells. Uh, Madam Clerk, call the roll. District 1, Commissioner Oakley. Uh, District 3, Commissioner uh, Starkey. Yes. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Masha. <laughs> Motion. Motion passes 4 0. Um, Commissioner Oakley will not be with us the rest of this afternoon. So he won't came out the rest of the day, I guess. Um, thank you, um, everybody. I'm glad we got that done. Uh, move on to item P2. And Madam Clerk, do we have proof, please? For item P2, we have um, po published in Tampa Bay Times on May 27, 2020. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you like me to read the ordinance, Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes, go ahead, please. Thank you so much. Okay. Item P2 is OMB 20-0034. Uh, it is an ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Article 6, Division 3, to reduce the tax income and percentage for the Pasco County Transportation District and Multimodal Transportation Fund, providing for repealer, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for an effective date. And this comes to you as a recommendation of approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pitos. Um, this is a public hearing. Madam Clerk, do we have any want anyone signed up for this item for p2 we do not have anyone signed up for this item uh, back to the board any questions comments or i'll entertain a motion move to accept p2 commissioner starkey okay so i have a motion by commissioner starkey i think i heard commissioner mario would jump in there if you want to second it second second by commissioner mariano madam clerk please call roll District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Yes. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Um, item P3, do we have proof, please? Yes, Commissioner. We have uh, pub proof of publication in the Tampa Bay Times on April 26, 2020. Thank you. 
Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and let staff take this on. Mr. Chairman, P3 is an ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, providing for the amendment of Chapter 42. To Pasco County Code of Ordinances, providing for modification, repealer, severability, inclusion in the Pasco County Code, providing for an effective date. Uh, this was last before you at your uh, early June meeting, um, and the board requested the county attorney's office add some language. Um, that gave you some control over how many times property might be cut. Uh, we've added into section five at the bottom of the, that paragraph uh, for those violations under 2A, which exceed one acre prior to the prior to the county suspending fund spent prior to the county spending funds to correct the offending condition, the Board of County Commissioners must approve the taking of corrective action. Uh, we believe that that addresses at least some of the commissioner's concerns. Uh, other than that, uh, with some clarifications in some paragraphs about um, improved property, the ordinance remains the same as it was at your last hearing. Thank you, Mr. Steinsider. Um, questions, comments at this time? Uh, I have a question, uh, Mr. Snyder. Hey, so, you pull your camera down just a little bit where I only see half of you. There you go. Perfect. Well, I'm trying to squeeze my lunch eyes. in here sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> we can only see your <laughs> eyes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Stein Snyder, could you go over what exactly will be the responsibility of the owner of this golf course if this goes through just for clarity? Thank you. So this ordinance does not just apply to golf courses, but if in, in the event that a golf course is left in a abandoned condition, it would be the golf course owner's responsibility having, having for improved the property at some point to make it a golf course uh, to maintain it at eight inches. The whole course? The whole course. Yeah, I I um I still object to this. I I, I think um I think having a band around people's houses is prudent, uh that should be mowed for fire safety and um just safety in general, but I don't understand how you force uh, someone whose business has failed to um continue to spend money. I, I think the best Better solution, and I don't know what Commissioner Mariano has done with this neighborhood, but the better solution is for the neighborhood to come up with a way that this part, this golf course can be part of their community. I don't think uh, if you buy property with the, and you don't own what's behind you, you're not guaranteed uh, a view. And, and so um, it's unfortunate they haven't worked out a deal to help um, pay for some of the upkeep of the golf course. I don't think anyone does a course like this anymore. If, if uh, someone's building a golf course in a neighborhood, it's it's pretty much mandatory that everyone in that neighborhood pays a, a, a percentage to keep the golf course um, dues. You know, they all need the dues to help maintain the golf course. So uh, I think what this is going to do is hasten something that folks don't want, um, which is a bankruptcy on um, this with this gentleman or the sale to a developer. But you can't force someone to um, to stay in business when when it's not working. So uh, I'd love to see an MSBU maybe for this community, and some of this property could be a park. Some of the property probably could be developed. I understand that the, the landowner, who again, I've never met, never heard from, never talked to, owns some piece of land by the clubhouse, which he wanted to develop. And I think it's zoned re, uh, res mine, or something like that. And his intent, this is what an HOA leader told me, was to 
develop that property and then he would have had those those be required to pay into the golf course so then he would have had income coming in um but he needed to get an easement from the hoa because it clipped part of the tennis courts but they denied him the ability to get to that property um and so uh yeah so he's really stuck he's really stuck and I just, I, I find this kind of un-American. Um, people, like I said before, uh, lived on, uh, they backed up to what is now Longleaf. And they came to the county when we came in for our, for rezoning. Um, and they said they paid extra for the view of our ranch. And they didn't want their view to go away. And so they wanted the county to not allow us to develop our property, um, which is not legal. And and so I I think this will be challenged because I, I don't see how this is legal. I know I know that Seminole County has it, but um, why why only one county in the state when this when these golf courses are failing all over the state? So um, I agree that he he would. Have, I think it should be modified to say twenty five or thirty feet behind each home, but not the whole golf course. Commissioner Starkey, that's what your existing ordinance that we're modifying says. You said he had to mow the whole golf course. What I'm saying is your existing ordinance that this is modifying creates a 30 foot buffer. Any attorney was instructed that that wasn't sufficient. That's why no, this ordinance is before you. Yes, and I and I objected then, and I, I'm just objecting again. Because I don't, I, I don't, I don't see how this is legal. I think it'll be challenged, um, and I think it hastens something. Probably those residents don't want. And a better solution is to find a solution, a different solution for that community. You don't own your view if you don't own the property, unless you're backing up to a wildlife protected land or water. Um, you, you don't own the view. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, now I, I, I remember this is a public hearing and uh, I do wanna, if everybody's okay with it, I would like to um, ask if we have anybody signed up for this, for this item before we go back to staff and ask M Mr. Questions. Chairman? Yeah. Yeah, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, Jack, Mark, can I speak before we go to public comment? No, that's fine. I just wanna make sure you guys knew, I think we do have people signed up. I'm not correct, Madam yeah, Clerk. that's fine. Okay. I, I just wanna okay. cover a couple points that she had mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in Seminole County, where I, one of the places I got the idea from, also Winter Park has got a similar ordinance where they make and maintain that golf course. Um, you've got issues that are out there between stormwater, number one, needs, needs to be maintained. Uh, this doesn't really deal with that, but you've got rats and snakes uh, that people are dealing with right now. Um, and it's a little different from buying a piece of property next to a farmland where the cattle is grazing. These people bought into a golf course community, paid a premium for the golf course, uh, property that sits on the golf courses and was expected to go that way. All we're looking for them to do is just do the right thing is maintaining the grass to a certain level. Maybe they work something out down the road. That'll be up to them. It's not up to us to step into it. Um, I did try earlier, but uh, there wasn't any, uh, any positivity there. It wasn't like plantation palms where they came together and, and, and made something work. Uh, it was just a, a different construct. So this, you know, Multi-millionaires can do whatever they want to go do. He's doing what he wants to do. Uh, I do know that it was probably 10 years ago that a previous owner of the property that she that he has bought beside this golf course did come before them. They couldn't quite work out terms, but it's not to say that couldn't happen if they came back again to the table and maybe this uh, will make that even happen. But uh, it's, it is a different situation. And I'll wait for public comment for anything further. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mariano. And I, I just want to read one thing to everybody and make sure we know this is a countywide ordinance. So, um, Mr. Steinsetter, this isn't, you know, this is a focus on one specific area. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page that in the public that's listening is that, um, in essence, this is really isn't the due because just because of one property, right? We got to make sure that we understand this is a countywide ordinance, Mr. Steinsetter. 
That's correct. It's countywide ordinance. It applies to anything that would be that would meet the definition of improved property under uh, under this ordinance. Okay. Uh, Mr. Snyder, question on that. Uh, are there any other properties that come to mind that need this kind of attention? I'm just curious. Because uh, I, I think now the DOT is going to have to cut their swales and their, um, are they exempt? DOT exempt? Yes, as we discussed at the last hearing, those sorts of things are exempt from the definition of improved and the property. And the county's exempt as well? Those sorts of things, the, there's a definition of improved property and those things that are listed as exempt whether they're the county, whether they're county, state, or otherwise are from the ordinance and they don't, the ordinance doesn't apply to it. And um, I wanted to address the snakes and rats and things um, because people pay a premium to back up to our well fields that are um, full of wildlife, coyote, snakes, wild pigs, all kinds of things. and and. Um, Thank goodness they're not asking the water management district to uh, to clear it so there aren't any animals running around. But again, I don't think this is a good idea at all. Um, okay, Madam Clerk, could we go ahead and um, take public comment at this time? Yes, sir. We have two callers who had registered, but only one on the line to speak. Mr. John Seibart. Go ahead and put them on the line. Good afternoon. Please state your name and address for the record and start your comment. Hello, my name is John Seibart. My wife and I live at number 8834 Poe Drive in Hudson, which is part of the estates community. Uh, again, I've, I've made a few phone calls and sent emails. Uh, our concerns here is the closed golf course. And we've had this discussion as I noted uh, many times, the, the big concern right now is that the, the course is, is really overgrown. There's rodents, which I have evidence uh, with both pictures and damage that was done to a neighbor's pool heater. And I think this is just the beginning. We're just going into July. It's gonna be a lot of rain over the summer. I'm really hoping that an ordinance change would help us uh, with the overgrown course. And it's not just the estates, there's over a thousand single family homes, which includes Beacon Point, the estates, Barrington Woods, Millwood Village, and Fairway Oaks. <clears throat> That's over a thousand, thousand homes. Once again, please, the ordinance is on the table please require the owner of the golf course to mow when the height is over eight inches. This has been going on for a year and his attempt at growing trees is, is was a really bad move on his part and it's created a big mess. So I'm asking you as a resident, taxpayer, and a community member to please approve that ordinance. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, sir. And we do not have anybody else online, Madam Clerk? No, sir, but we have two emails to be read into the record. All right, please go ahead. Both are from Ms. Diane Kubernick. Commissioners, as you are aware, I Time have out. been speaking I'm sorry. to- I'm out, Madam, Madam Clerk. Yes. Two emails on one item, Mr. Steinman. Yes, two. If she can get it, get through it in three in three minutes, it's, okay, so to make sure they're, yeah, we can't go three minutes in three minutes, so. Well, yeah, I think I think they were received at two different meetings, but but I'd go ahead and read what you can in three minutes. One is okay, dated uh, June 15th and the other is dated June 27th. So the first email is, as you are aware, I've been speaking and sending you many emails regarding the issue of Chapter 42 long before you brought this issue to forefront. My September 23rd, 2018 letter to all county commissioners detailed the county code violations under chapter 42. 
The letter also detailed the Florida Statute 125.69, which is available to the county on how to deal with repeat offenders and the stricter fines allowable. I understand that some county commissioners are worried about the cost the county may incur if an irresponsible owner does not abide by the county code. However, I would like to remind you that in the existing approved ordinance section, chapter 42-1 clause three, the following is the actual language. The notice shall inform the owner that if the condition is not corrected within 14 calendar days of the date of posting, the offending condition will be corrected by the county or an independent contractor and the cost thereof, plus a penalty, administrative cost, interest, and attorney fee shall be assessed as a lien against the lands. Section, uh, section chapter 42-1, clause five, the following is the actual language. Imposition of a lien, if a, any landowner to whom a demand or order has been directed fails to correct an offending condition within the applicable time period provided in subsection three, the Board of County Commissioners through its designee is authorized to correct the offending condition and by resolution to assess a lien on behalf of the county. The actual cost of correcting the offending conditions plus a penalty of the amount equal to the cost of, or $75, which is greater, plus administrative costs, including necessary expenses for investigation of the complaint, preparation, filing, and recording of the assessment lien and legal expenses incident thereto, plus interest, plus reasonable attorney's fee shall be assessed against such lands. The lien shall be a special assessment lien against the property and shall be given the same priority with the lien of the county at valorum cat taxes and will be superior and priority to all other liens, encumbrances, titles, and claims in to or against the lands involved and shall remain a lien until paid. It appears, <clears throat> it appears the county has a viable solution should the county need to correct a violation. I believe that one, any violator should be made completely aware of the consequences of not correcting the violation. The county actually follows through with what is already in their arsenal of dealing with the violators. Three, an unpaid um, ad valorem tax is subject to the county foreclosing on a property for unpaid taxes for foreclosures of these troubled properties is available to the county or the property owner actually pays for the cost. Five, if the property owner does not pay the ad valorem tax and the county needs to foreclose, the county would then own the property and have the ability to provide the subdivision with a protected green space for the benefit of the subdivision. In conclusion, the county is, a win, is in a win-win position. If the owner does not maintain the property, the county should make the corrective action and file a lien. After that, one of two things will happen. One, the owner will pay the lien or an existing lien owner will pay it to protect the position of the year get, way it gets paid. Or two, nobody pays the lien and the county forecloses and owns the property for free. That was just the first email. Okay. Is there time left? No, that was a three minute buzzer. Okay, thank you. Um, back to the board. I have a question on that um, based Starkey. on that letter. Commissioner Starkey. Yeah, um, uh, Mr. Steinsnyder, Mr. Biles, um, have we had to step in and take care of any property when the homes or whatever fell into disrepair? Hello? Yeah, that'd be Mr. Stipes. Yeah. We, we do, we do overgrown lot maintenance all the time, Commissioner. Yes. Have we foreclosed on a house because they had uncut grass? Uh, I am not aware that we have, we have gone through the foreclosure process on any of the these outstanding liens with the possible exception of the Sutherland property. So if we um, if we do have to step in and take care of property, are we going to foreclose on it or, or are we allowed to pick and choose which properties we foreclose upon? Or do we have to do them all? That would be up to the board's direction to the county attorney. That was my question. Okay. Um, this Mr. Member. Chairman Jack Mariano. Mr. Mariano. Uh, when I look at the list that we're given for public comment um, from this morning, it, it shows in the we're supposed to have some public comment by phone by a Elizabeth Kickatz for the Lynx Golf Course, but she didn't speak for some reason. Difficult then. Okay. And then there's another one by Thomas Carroll. 
uh, talking about the same thing it was scheduled for this afternoon. I guess you didn't call in either. And there were, I think if you, everyone looks at the list, there was a Judith Parker. There was William and Mary Ellen Henderson and Kendra Tino, Nancy Pelzer, uh, Phyllis Cox, Karen Crow, B. Salerno, Susan Croft, Nancy and Larry Peter, and Neil and Cindy Minahan. And I, and I know we've got a lot of other emails from people through the week, uh, past couple of weeks. And I had met with the associations, all five associations, with all their elected board members. And they all signed a letter and sent a petition in. I didn't see it anywhere in the record, but uh, they sent a, a letter in saying that uh, they did want to see this ordinance go through. Uh, these people have been through a lot for a whole year. Um, as I said, I tried to step in early to try to make something happen. Like, you know, Commissioner Moore, you were successful at Plantation Palms, but uh, to whatever the reasons going on. Uh, Seminole County's had great success. Um, Longstanding commissioner who was also a past senator and representative for that area. Um, when I was asking for help, he came up with the idea. Uh, say Winter Haven's had great success with it. You know, we had talked with the agricultural community. We put them at ease where they're comfortable with this. Uh, same thing with the development community. So primarily, it's going to do a lot of great things for this area. Uh, these homes have probably lost what would have been at least 30,000 value just from what the owner of the property told me from what one transaction. So it is protecting the neighborhood. Uh, it is quality of life that's out there. The rats, the snakes, et cetera. Um, at a golf course, you don't get nearly what they're getting in right now. So we're actually gonna do the right thing for the neighborhood. So um, I'll wait for further public comment from other my other commissioners first. Thank you, Commissioner Mariotta. Commissioner Wiles, do you have anything? No, I don't. I mean, I, I've been up there. I've met with the residents. Again, I, uh, as Commissioner Starkey said, I, I don't know who the owner is. I've never heard from him or her, um, which I'm kind of surprised, but it is what it is. But I know it's a mess. I mean, I've seen it. Um, it looks kind of like, quite frankly, how Golf Harbors does in some areas and uh, the, the golf course that we own that we're maintaining. Obviously, we're going to have to maintain more of it. But I do agree that something has to be done up there. And I'm really disappointed that this owner hasn't come forward to have a conversation with us. So if this is what it takes to have him do that, I mean, yeah, I'm okay with it. As long as you've met with the ag community and, and I have not, but you're telling me they're good with it, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Approval P3. I have a motion for approval P P3. Second. I have a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Nay, it's not the right solution. District four, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District five, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District two, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 3-1. Madam Clerk, P4, we have publication in the Tampa Bay Times on March 21st, 2020 and June 21st, 2020. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item P4 is an ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending Chapter 27 of the Pasco County Code of Ord Ordinances regulating communications facilities within the public rights of way of Pasco County <clears throat> pursuant to Section 337.401 Florida statutes providing for inclusion into the code of ordinances, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. This comes to you with the recommendation of approval. Thank you. Questions from, well, actually, I'm sorry. Um, well, I'll ask for questions. If not, I'll, if nobody has any questions at this time, uh, this is a public hearing and we'll need to uh, see if anybody signed up to speak. No questions? And Madam Clerk, anybody signed up to speak? No, sir. Okay, any questions from the board? Comments? Entertainment. Move approval. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariana. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Yes, sorry, that was muted. District four, Commissioner Wells. Aye. 
District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 4-0. Thank you so much. And we're moving on to P5. Madam Clerk, we have proof of P5, please. Proof of publication, Tampa Bay Times, February 14th, 2020, March 21st, 2020, June 21st, 2020. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item P5 is PDD 20-0383. It's an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, providing for a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2-15 and, and sheet 04, changing from Res 1, residential one dwelling unit per gross acre, to Res 6, residential six dwelling units per gross acre, on approximately 29 acres of real property located on the west side of Hayes Road, approximately 1.25 miles north of State Road 52, providing for repealer, severability, and an effective date. And this comes with a recommendation to approve. Thank you. Um, any, any questions at this time? I ask for public comment. Any questions? Seeing none, do we have anybody signed up for public comment? We do not have any callers, but we do have two emails uh, to be read into the record. Please go ahead. They're, they're again from the same gentleman. I will try to get through both of them. Uh, Mr. Rob Park writes, Pasco Commissioners, I request that you repeal the May 21st, 2019 decision on the ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan regarding the parcel at the intersection of Efren Cutoff and Calentine Boulevard or Tower Road, depending on which document yeah. is read, from, from residential one to residential six. See May 21, 2019 minutes, P, section P5, memorandum number PDD 19-0986 and section P11, memorandum PDD 19-7367, ordinance number 19, section three, severability states in part, if exhibits are invalid, the ordinance shall be suspended. The exhibits of the date, data that referenced traffic impact was done before Efren cutoff was resurfaced and widened in corners. The numbers do not accurately, accurately reflect the amount of substantially increased traffic after the Aaron cutoff was improvements. Some exhibits referenced in the Collier Parkway extension and Collier Parkway merge. This BCC voted on January 9th, 2020 at the 1000 MPO meeting for funding to the MPO, which in the, included the MPO 2045 plan that eliminated the Collier Parkway extension, action item D and E of the January 9, 2020 meeting. Furthermore, I disagree with staff's recommendation, recommendation to approve regarding not being a, an impact to the surrounding area. This P5? I know it's listed as P5, and that's what it says on the sheet, but it's, it's not the right item for this. And this is what we're talking about. This is west side of Hayes Road. Commissioner's right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That's what it's. All right. Good catch. So then, thank you. Okay. So we don't have anybody, anything for this item? No other emails on this item, sir. Okay, thank you. Back to the board. Questions, comments? Seek me now your motion. Move approval. Jack Mariano. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano and a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. And in one sec, that's P5, so P6. We have publication. Yep. For P6, Tampa Bay Times, no, November 29, 2019, and June 21, 2020. Mr. Chairman, yep. item, P, item P6 is PDD 20-0594. It is an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, <clears throat> providing for a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2-15 and sheet 20, changing from Res 3, residential three dwelling units per gross acre, and ROR, retail office residential, to Res 6, residential six dwelling units per gross acre, on approximately 41.758 acres on, of real property located at the intersection of Little Lake Thomas Road and Land Lakes Boulevard, 
providing for repeal or severability and an effective date. And this comes with a recommendation to approve. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody signed up to speak on this item? We have callers. So the comments you just read, those are for P6. Yes, we have no callers though, but I do have the two emails to read. Okay, so well, I think we need to do them again so they're under the right item for the record. Okay, um, I'll start over. Paso Com Commissioners, this again is from Rob Park. I request you repeal the May 21, 2019 decision on an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan regarding the parcel at the intersection of Aaron Cutoff and Caliente Bul Boulevard or Tower Road, depending on which document is read from residential one to residential six. See May 21, 2019 minutes, section P5, memorandum number PDD 19-0986 and section P11, memorandum PDD 19-7367. Six, seven, ordinance number. Yes, sir. So, Terry, that, that she just described Caliente Boulevard and what, what, um, and Aaron Cutoff. And Aaron yeah. Cutoff. Yeah. Obviously, some confusion here. Lake Thomas is? Little Lake yeah. Thomas is right yeah. off of Atlanta Lakes Boulevard. Little Lake Thomas. Hey, north of Aaron Lake. Cutoff. Hey guys, I got it. It's Atlanta Lakes Boulevard. <laughs> it's Atlanta Lakes Boulevard and Little Lake Thomas Road. Right. There may be this may be close. Yeah. This says Aaron Cutoff and Caliente Boulevard um, or Tower Road, depending on which document is read. Okay. I believe the um, speaker or the emailer is referring to a comprehensive plan amendment that occurred in 2019 in the vicinity of Little Lake Thomas and Land Lakes, but it it is to the north and east possibly by a half a mile. Oh. So, so the area. Well, we got to let, hold on one sec, please. Um, Mr. Steinschneider. Yes. Um, so it sounds like, so if Terry's correct, um, that would not be prudent to this item. Right? Well, I, I can't tell if if county administration is sure that this comment was filed for P6. I just didn't want the clerk wasting time reading it again. It doesn't, it didn't sound factually like it was about this piece of property, but if we think that it is on P6, then we can go ahead and enter it into the record. Okay. Well. We have more though, do we not? No. Same gentleman, separate email. It still has time. Can... Right? Okay, so um, I'll continue. The exhibits of the data that referenced traffic impact that was done before Aaron Cutoff, cutoff was refer, resurfaced and widened in corners. The numbers do not accurately refer, reflect the amount of substantially increased traffic after Aaron Cutoff improvements. Some exhibits referenced in the Collier Parkway Extension and Collier Parkway merge. This BCC voted on January 9, 2020 at the 1000 MPO meeting for funding for the MPO, which included the MPO 2045 plan that eliminated the Collier Parkway extension action items D and E in the January 29, pardon me, January 9, 2020 meeting. Furthermore, I disagree with staff's recommendation to approve regarding not being an impact to the surrounding area. That is false. Everyone on Aaron Cutoff has one residence per acre or greater Amending the ordinance will diminish the quality of life and the value of properties in this area. Second email, Pasco commissioners, please do not approve this development as there is insufficient local amenities like restaurants for that area. If you add another development, then our already two busy roads will become busier and in order to drive out of the area to get something to eat. There are pleas and memorandum PDD 20-0594 supporting materials, uh, ATT five opposition letters, not to do this for multiple multitude of different reasons. Please listen to the people and don't do what was done to the residents of Bahia Acres and surrounding homes by putting a gun range in the backyards. Everyone pleaded, don't do it. And it was done anyway. State Road 54 is a disaster. It is nice if you like that. 40,000 homes are approved off State Road 52. Great for them. Not every inch in Pasco has to be developed. Keep this area the same way your predecessors projected. 
nice big lots with lots of room and views to enjoy the vibrant Pasco that is being advertised. Sincerely, Rob Park. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. I'm talking to me. You, Terry? Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the comments that I heard, um, I think the, the, the email was um, suggesting that the traffic analyses that were done in the comprehensive plan amendment uh, from 2019 in the area, but not in the same place as this is, um, that, they, that they were not accurate. But I, I, I guess my response to that would be that all comprehensive plan amendments undergo what's called the transportation needs assessment, which is a check against all against the current existing models that we have available uh, to measure the impact of the land use from a transportation standpoint. We check that against the comprehensive plans policies. We check that against the long range transportation plan. And then we go further and check uh, the specific impact when, when we look at the zoning piece uh, of this, of the planning program. We look at the timing and phasing analyses for the project to make sure that um, any impacts to the roads are properly accounted for um, and upgraded if so, if so needed. Um, and then further to go beyond that, we also check the access and management when it's time for site planning. Um, so, but they referenced the comprehensive plan. Um, the transportation needs assessment was conducted according to how the comprehensive plan uh, mandates. Um, and the, I believe the staff at the time, the planning and development department recommended approval for it. And in, the, and in this case too, with Little Lake Thomas, the same process was played out. Um, and there was considerable discussion at the various public hearings regarding the, uh, the impact of this on, on Land O'Lakes Boulevard and the, and the data was suggesting uh, that the project is able to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Pitos. Yes. Um, any questions from the board? Any comments? Seeing that, I entertain a motion. Move approval. Back in. A motion by Commissioner Mariano and a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Yes. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. Uh, we're moving on to P7. Do we have proof of P7? Yes, sir. Tampa Bay Times, June 3rd, 2020, June 10, 2017, June 17, 2020, and June 24th, 2020. Item P7. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item P7 is PDD 20 600. It's an ordinance establishing the North AR1 of Pasco Community Development District pursuant to chapter 190 Florida statutes, providing for authority and power of the district, providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the board of supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date. And this comes to you with the recommendation of approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Do we have anybody signed up to speak to this item? No, sir, we have no callers and no emails. Okay. Anybody on the board? Any comments or questions? Move approval. Jack Mariano. Motion by Commissioner Mariano. Second. Second, Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 to 0. Uh, another CDD ordinance uh, boundaries. It looks like P8, please. Yeah, proof. proof of publication, Tampa Bay Times, June 17, 2020. Item P8 is PDD 200601, an ordinance amending the boundaries of the Epperson Ranch Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida statutes and amending Pasco County Ordinance Number 14-13. Providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date, and this comes with the recommendation of approval. Thank you. Any? Oh, do we have anybody signed up for public comment first? I'm sorry. We have no callers, no emails. Anybody have any questions or comments? Move approval. 
Move approval, Jack Mariano. Second. A motion by Commissioner Mariano, a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. P9. Madam Clerk, do we have, do we have proof? Yes, sir. Proof of publication, Tampa Bay Times, June 17, 2020. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Item P9 is PDD 20-0602, in ordinance amending the boundaries of the Epperson Ranch 2 Community Development District, pursuant to Chapter 190 of Florida Statutes, and amending Pasco County Ordinance Number 14-13, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date, and this too comes with the recommendation of approval. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment? No, sir. No calls, no emails. All right. Questions, comments? Seeing none. Seeing none, move approval, Jack Mariano. Second, Commissioner Starkey. Well, motion by Commissioner Mariano, second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. 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 District, District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And that does it. For those, unless one snuck in, I didn't Mr. see. Mr. Chairman, yes, I've just yes. been handed a a memo that the actual ordinance title of P9 was an ordinance amending the boundaries of Epperson Ranch to Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes, amending Pasco County Ordinance 18-01 mm. as amended mm. by by Pasco County Ordinance. 1902 providing for miscellaneous provisions and providing for an effective date um let's redo the motion I, right to the record the record needs to reflect that yes do we need to restate the motion and take 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 another vote mr stein snyder or that would be the most the most clean is that to make sure that that that's the ordinance you're adopting okay so if we could make a motion to revise so move so move Thanks. the revised motion. Jack, Jack Mariano. Mariano. Did I hear a second from Wells? Is that what I heard? Second, Commissioner yes, Stark. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was just I couldn't hear it. So I think the second came from Wells, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District four, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District five, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District two, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 4-0. Thank you, Mr. Steinsteiner, for that. Um, next, we'll proceed with the procedures for rezonings. Mr. County Attorney, to review the procedure for rezonings. Be happy. Be happy to, Mr. Chairman, as soon as they come up. Well, it sounded like somebody was driving a truck through the uh, boardroom there. There are two rezoning agendas, regular and consent. Staff will present each application to the Board of County Commissioners. If staff or planning commission has recommended approval and there is no opposition, the application will be considered by the board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial or if there is opposition to the application, the applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative and the applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. Any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request that the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. These are quasi judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for this board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria found within the board's land development code. Thank you, Mr. Stein Snyder. Um, we do have seven public hearings that are on the consent agenda. These items will be approved with one vote without a presentation, unless there is someone here in objection. Uh, but we have two items before the consent agenda. But I'd like to go ahead, if Madam Clerk, if you can handle the swearing in. So um, you should have a list provided 
And if you could properly swear in each of the people individually for the agenda. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do them individually per agenda item, I guess. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead with P10, which is a continuance. But before we move to that, do we have anybody um, signed up that needs to be sworn in on P10? No, sir. No callers. Okay. So that's as I'm just going to read this out real quick. Zoning amendment continue at Seven Oaks MPD Master Plan Unit Development SB Associates Limited Partnership and modification to the currently approved MPD Master Plan and conditions of approval. Again, I don't. It should not say approval with conditions. That's an error on staff's part. Um, that is a continuance. Um, I, folks, that um, we have that has to be heard on the east side of the county, as you will know. Um, the next meeting of the east side of the county is on August fourth. Meet. I don't think there's another one in August after that. Just beware that that was an item that had quite a bit of public comment and um, the emails I know we've seen with the now of people that have possibly, you know, I don't I won't get into it, but there's a lot of people that have obviously sent emails. So there'll be a lot of com public comment. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You want to continue it to August? You want to move it or, or you want to move it further where people could be in front of us? So I'll leave it up to you guys. Move to continue August 4th. Yeah, I got a motion to continue August 4th. And that would be at 1 30 person there after the same meeting. Second. At 1 30. Motion to continue to August 4th at 1 30. And I have a second by Commissioner Wells. <coughs> oh, oh, actually, Madam Clerk calls the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. I was ready to hear it. District 4. Part. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Thank you much. Next one is another continuance. I'm just going to go ahead and read that one off too. Uh, mining operating permit and conditional use amendment request to commence coastal landfill disposal of Florida LLC. Mining operation permit, conditional use permit amended for existing mining and construction of demolition of debris. Disposal facility north of West Pasco County at the end of Houston. Avenue approximately two miles east of US 19 and approximately 88.72 acres. This actually has a recommendation to continue to August 19th, 2020, the BCC meeting at 1 30 p.m. in Newport Ritchie. Is that correct, Mr. Pito? Yes. Okay, entertain a motion to continue to the date and time certain. Move to continue time certain. Jack Mariano. Second. I have, a, I have a motion to continue this August 19, 2020, 130, and a second by Commissioner Wells. Motion was by Commissioner Mariana. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Aye. Now we'll move on with the consent agenda items P12 through PT, P18 of the consent agenda. Um, so, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody signed up on any of these items to be sworn in, starting with P12? No, sir. No emails, no callers. Okay, so we're just going to roll through it because nobody signed up to speak. Okay, do we have proof for P12? Proof of publication Tampa Bay Times, April 8th, 2020. And June 21st, 2020. And actually, you know, can you read proof for each one of the items now so we can get, we'll get through them? Yes, sir. Uh, P13, Tampa Bay Times, March 13th, 2020, and June 21st, 2020. P14, Tampa Bay Times, May 24th, 2020, and June 21st, 2020. P15, Tampa Bay Times, May 24th, 2020, and June 21st, 2020. Um, P16, Tampa Bay Times, May 24, 2020, and June 21st, 2020. P17, Tampa Bay Times, May 24, 2020, and June 21st, 2020. And then P18, Tampa Bay Times, May 20, 2020. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Pitos, are you taking over for Ms. Hernandez today? Yes, sir. All right. Are you, you want me to read these off, or are you going to be able to talk as fast as Ms. Hernandez? I will talk faster. <laughs> <laughs> Does that have a problem with you? I'll, I'll just go straight through if you want me to. Yeah, let's do it. 
P12 is item PDD 2074-72, zoning amendment consent, William Scott and Michelle L. Walsingham, change in zoning from AC Agricultural District to C2 General Commercial District, Southwest Pasco County, on the southeast corner of the intersection of Decubulus Road and Starkey Boulevard, containing approximately 4.86 acres, comes with a recommendation of approval. Yeah, and we don't have anybody signed up, correct? I'll just ask. Uh, I have a question correct. on this. Oh, do you want me to pull this or do you have a question? Well, I, I, I guess you have to pull it because I, right. I have a question. All right, we're pulling P12. Uh, okay, I heard that. P13. Item P13 is zoning amendment, Little Lake Thomas MPUD Master Plan Unit Development, NZ Corporation and Two Sisters Land Trust. It's a rezoning request from, R, from an R1 Rural Density Residential District to an MPUD Master Plan Unit Development District to allow 218 single family attached townhome units on approximately 45.52 acres comes with a recommendation of approval with conditions and attachments were sent, distributed to the board. Do we have anybody signed up that opposed this item? I don't think we did, right? We have no one signed up, but it should be noted that there um, were missing documents in SIRE for this item for P13. Mr. Steinsmeyer. Mr. Pitas just announced that he had distributed them to you. So I'm assuming that you have you have the documents that the clerk is saying weren't in Sire. Does the clerk's office have this item? If not, we can get this through them her real quick, please, for the record. Yeah, I'm being told we do not have them. They were sent around 940 this morning. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Goldstein. This is, this is David Goldstein. Barbara Wilhite just called me on my cell saying she registered to speak on this item and, and nobody's elevated her to speak. Okay. So I don't know if she's an attendee that can be promoted or not. Yeah, no, we don't have any objections, so it's not being full consent item. So, but I, I guess I'm concerned because you were, you were told that nobody registered to speak, and she did. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So we do not have an, a form for her that I can see in the system, uh, but if she's just as a representative, she has been promoted to speak. Okay. If she's asking to speak, I think we should let her speak. Then I'll have to pull the item. It's a kids. This is a consent item, and there's no okay. objection. Well. So that she, means we have to pull it. She's asking that she be able to speak. So that's fine. Yes, I mean, I'm telling you, she obviously she can't. That means I have to pull the item. Is what I'm stating. It's a consent item. If we speak on consent, it means I have to pull it. Yes, will, sir. Pull the item. Yes, thank you. So that we pulled. That will come at the end. P14. <laughs> Item P14 is zoning amendment Jonathan Ash. So change in zoning from C2 General oh, Commercial okay. District to R3 Medium Density Residential now. District, South Central Pasco County on the east side of Land O'Lakes Boulevard, approximately half a mile north of State Road 54, containing approximately 2.51 acres. It comes with a recommendation of approval. Anybody sign up to speak and objection to this item? I have no callers, no emails. Okay, leave on consent. P15. P15 is zoning amendment Daniel J and Bonita G. Jones and Richard Mark. Change in zoning from AC Agricultural District to C2 General Commercial District, Southeast Pasco County on the east side of Island Boulevard, approximately 675 feet north of State Road 54, containing approximately 2.58 acres, and it comes with a recommendation of approval. You might sign up to speak to this item. No, sir. I have no callers, no emails. Okay, leave them consent. P17. Item P16 Item P is a conditional use request, Cracker Barrel Old Country Store, Inc., sale of alcoholic beverages, two cup, beer and wine only, on-premises consumption and package sales in conjunction with the operation of a restaurant with outside seating and, a ser and service of alcoholic beverages on a patio in a C2 general commercial district located in South Central Pasco County on the south side of Oakley Boulevard, approximately 650 feet east of the intersection of Wesley Grove Boulevard and Oakley Boulevard comes with a, con a recommendation of approval with conditions. Look at Crackle Barrel. Uh, P16, is anybody um, speaking, of, is any side of the speaking objection to this item? I have no speakers, no emails. Okay, P17. 
P17 is a conditional use request, PSM South Branch LLC, Publix, the preserved marketplace, uh, sale of alcoholic beverages, two cup, beer and wine only, on-premises consumption and package sales in conjunction with the operation of a marketplace in a MPUD master plan unit development district in, the, in South Central Pasco County on the east side of South Branch Boulevard, approximately 400 feet north of State Road 54. It also comes with a recommendation of approval with conditions. Anybody sign up to speak an objection to this item? I have no speakers, no callers. Okay, leave on consent. And P18. P18 is UT200336. Oh. It's a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, designating that area commonly referred to as Hidden Lake Estates Units 1 and 2 as a street lighting service area for street lighting improvements and to levy assessments against the property benefited by street lighting improvements in accordance with the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, Chapter 94, Article 2, Sections 94-46 through 94-56. Comes with a recommendation of approval. Anybody here to speak in objections to the, or not here, <laughs> signed up to speak in objections to this item? I have no callers, no emails. Great, leave on consent. And if I'm not correct, that's the last item, but we do have P12 and P13 or pull. I'll entertain a motion to, for the rest of the items. So so second. I have a motion Mariano. Mr. Wells and a second by Commissioner Mariano. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starking. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes. Four to zero. So we're going to go back to P12. Well, Commissioner Starking had a question. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, get in touch with my husband here. And I know Barbara will have listening and she was a county attorney at the time. I think David Goldstein was at the county when the family uh, gave the land uh, to Starkey Boulevard to the county. There were some restrictions on Starkey Boulevard. It was designated as a scenic road. And, um, and the family has, rights to signage approvals and um for example no boards are allowed to be on starkey boulevard and I'm trying to get a hold of my husband here but i just i i'm sure it's going to be a nice boat rv storage and i don't object to that on the corner i i just want to be sure that you to maintain the character of starkey boulevard in a way that um it was nice uh, I want to know what kind of landscaping would be uh, along the edge there on Starkey Boulevard. Mr. Chairman, offhand, I, I don't have the answer to that. That's usually something that we would handle during the site planning uh, discussion. But I, I take the commissioner's comments and fully note them uh, in terms of how we end up treating the length of the property along Starkey Boulevard. Thank you. So I just I keep uh, mind Alex, Alex is calling me, but I, I don't think I can take that call right now. So that's all. I just wanted to to uh, remind the county that there is this kind of added restriction on Starkey Boulevard. And um, so, uh, so I move approval. Yeah, and I, I okay. Well, did, Mr. Well, did you still you were trying to say something? Okay. No, it's uh, she understood. I mean, it's in my district, but she, I mean, Alex, it's the same folks developing the other side of the road. So it's going to be a great project, just like the project he has on Starkey and, and Decubulus. So I've already met with both of them. And uh, so I second her motion. Yeah, well, the, the difference on this one is that it's fronting Starkey Boulevard, not on Decubulus. So on the, the sign for the Starkey storage is on Decubulus, not on Starkey. So um, there are some restrictions that are just county may not be aware of it. Um, so anyway, I need the motion to approve. Okay, I had a motion by Commissioner Starkey and a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes for zero. Now the next item I pull was P13. 
uh, I'm sorry, yeah, P13, um, little Thomas PUD, and it was because um, Ms. Wilhite represents the um, developer, had some questions for the team. I think she's on the line now, if I'm not correct. I did see her earlier. There, there she is. So, Ms. Wilhite, I will go ahead and let you speak. Your, your, your mic is muted. We can't hear you now. Hey. There you How go. How about that? Oh, you can hear you. Barbara Wilhite, 6327 Grand Boulevard, Newport Ritchie, Florida, 34652. Actually, I was just trying to get recognized. I have eight items on, and for some reason, I'm not being recognized for any of those items. So there's some glitch going on with the um, county administration. So uh, I don't have anything particular to say to this item. I do. I, I can see and hear that there's some issue with paperwork. Hopefully, uh, Terry and the staff, they told me this morning there was an issue with paperwork, and they had to get that in place so that this item could be, go forward and get approved. Commissioner. Please go ahead. Chairman. Please. Um, Ms. Will Height needs to be sworn in. Okay. Go ahead and we'll, we'll swear in. Sorry about that. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. So she had, obviously, just to restate what Ms. Will Height stated, you know, she wants to make, is this paperwork in order now for her items? So that way, um, if this is approved, um, it does not have to come back, obviously, because of any mistake. Is that correct, Ms. Wally? That was my question. Yep. Can, can somebody confirm that this is out? Yeah. We have the paperwork, yes. Okay, so the clerk's office does have the paperwork. Okay. Any other questions from um, the applicant's representation, Ms. Wilhite? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, we're good. The work is straight. Everything's good. And now we can we can go ahead and do this for a vote. So moved. Second. Okay. And a motion by Commissioner Wells, a second by Commissioner Mariano. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. Okay, that, so that does it with the consent. We will move on to P19. Commissioners, uh, for the record, good afternoon. It's Marcy Esper, okay. Director of Community Development. And we're here today with a, a public hearing for the additional funds that we receive for the uh, Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. Next we slide, have, please. I still need proof from the clerk. Oh, sorry, you, sir. Uh, temp P19, Tampa Bay Times, June 21st, 2020. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Marcy. Thank you. Uh, so um, we received an additional $1.7 million of Community Development Block Grant, uh, otherwise known as CDBG CV funds, and that could be used for economic development, public facilities and infrastructure, affordable housing, and general public services. And then we also received a little over $835,000 of the $834,000 of the Emergency Solutions Grant ESG CV funds, and that is primarily for homeless services. And in order to uh, in order to uh, put this money out on the street, we had to make sure that all the projects and activities would prevent, prepare, or respond to COVID-19. Next slide, please. So just to give you an idea of the timeline, uh, we were notified of these additional funds on April 30th. We published uh, a funding uh, availability request for proposals on May 6th. We reviewed, uh, we uh, brought our committee together on May 27th to review the applications. And uh, uh, we should have updated the slide. We were going to present these to you on June 16th. Um, and here we are, June 30th. So that is actually a two month turnaround 
uh, with our projects to start on July 1. Next slide, please. So here are the funding recommendations. Uh, we are recommending a, a joint project with the Office of Economic Growth of $500,000 to work with local businesses uh, to respond to uh, the COVID-19 and how it affected their business and help them reopen. We're also uh, recommending for funding uh, $525,000 to uh, St. Vincent and Paul's uh, for the purchase of eight units of uh, what will be permanent supportive housing for the homeless. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the list of agencies that we would work with under general public services. So we're all uh, agencies that we've worked with before uh, in range of uh, working with those that are unemployed to those that might be experiencing foreclosure, mental health issues, children's trauma, uh, and uh, of course, health and, and drug testing. The next slide is the list of projects that we are recommending for under the ESG CV funding. And they are divided into three areas. Homeless prevention will be basically rental assistance uh, delivered from, from these agencies for people that have had uh, economic hardship based on COVID-19. Uh, the next group would be a rapid rehousing to rehouse people who have lost their housing due to COVID-19. And lastly, emergency shelter includes a deep cleaning as well as a shelter without walls, putting people into uh, emergency uh, housing with uh, our motel and hotels while preparing them for permanent housing. Next slide, please. Uh, we are asking today, it's a concurrent public hearing and approval that you recommend, uh, that you approve the projects that are being recommended and that would be an amendment to our 2019 action plan that you would delegate full authority to execute project specific agreements um, pursuant to the action plan between the county and HUD and that you would approve amendment, our first amendment to the citizen participation plan allowing for reduced uh, public comment period. Uh, also like to note that uh, the journal entry was um, was handed to all the commissioners and to the clerk of courts uh, to show that the this this these funds are budgeted and in receipt, recognizing these funds. Okay, thank you, Marcy. Any questions? Questions for Dino? Marcy, Sorry. great. Yeah, great job, Marcy. And um, did I not read or get an email? Um, maybe from NACO uh, that we received another 3.8 million. That's correct. That's the second round of ESG COVID money. Excellent. I, I really, um, I mentioned earlier in the day, I'm not sure if you could listen, that I really, we really have a problem with that same group of people hanging out at, in front of the Wawa. And um, I'm hoping that we can find a, something, some, a better place for those people to, to uh, to live than the Wawa bus station. <laughs> so um, anyway, I uh, I don't know if anyone else has any questions. But great job, and I would recommend approval if no one else has any questions. I'll second with discussion. I have a motion by Commissioner Starkey. I second by Commissioner Mariano with discussion. Yeah, yeah, Marcia, you're doing a heck of a job. I know there's a lot of information that comes in there. A lot of decisions have to be made, and. Um, I think you're doing super with it. Uh, I would like to have us take a look as far as the next allocation coming up. Uh, Metropolitan Ministries had a certain amount of money that was coming from the state. I believe it was 250 grand. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, maybe we can supplement their loss there to kind of help them out. Um, up in the Hudson area, Commissioner Starkey, just like down down south in the Holland area and northern New Paritia, I guess that homeless population still out there. We do need to get them off the street. The Roach Center houses a building that they've got where they can house, I think it's 20 women and 20 males. Uh, if we could build them another structure for just the females, you could double the male population, which is always full. Um, the Suncoast Recovery Center, Paula, by the way, is just applying for their permit. Are they in the process right now, Paula? 
And uh, I got an email back from Esther that they're going to help them go through the permitting process. If you can keep an eye on them, uh, they could take a bunch of people out of the heads and beds. I mean, out of, out of the beds, out of the streets and into beds. Um, those you may be familiar, we did a dredging. DOT actually did the dredging on Beaker Woods uh, Drive. Uh, there's a canal that goes across. DOT cleaned that out. And since I'll say probably about the last three months, there's been a new resurgence in the area for homeless. And they have gone. And the pollution that's down that canal right now is ridiculous. I don't know how many needles are down there, but the trash that's down there, uh, we need to find a place for these people to go. Um, and I think those three, uh, for the, your next round through, if you can really work with them closely, I know you're starting to, so if you keep working with them and try to bring us something back, it'll definitely help that area because the people up in Hudson are extremely frustrated as well as Gulf Islands. But thank you. So if I can just say to both of you, both commissioners and to people that are listening, uh, we are in the process of putting together a coordinated investment plan because there is an um, unprecedented amount of money that's coming into the county specifically for homeless services. And um, I will promise you that you will see a difference uh, because we will specifically be looking to um, take people off the streets and close down the encampments and put them into permanent housing. And there might be a stop gap where they're in hotel motels in between, but uh, there'll be a marked difference uh, with the use of these funds that are coming into the county. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a motion to second. We've seen no more. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Uh, yes. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Next up is P-20. Madam Clerk, do we have proof? P-20, we have Tampa Bay Times, June 17, 2020. And uh, Vice Chairman Wells, um, take over for a couple minutes and I'll be right back. Okay. So, um, where are we? Okay, um, gosh, I got something. Can you go to the beginning? Doesn't seem like you're on the right slides. Okay, I'll work with those. Uh, so we are in the process of working on our, um, our 2020 action plan. And, um, and these are, uh, this is the first public hearing of two public hearings. So there is no action required today. The, what we're doing today is pre presenting the first round of information and funding for these projects. So the source of funds that we have um, are, this is the regular community development block grant, the home investment partnership, and also ESG emergency solutions grant. Uh, so you could see a total of almost $6.5 million um, being able to put into these areas. Next slide, please. So we also use um, money for program administration. We're still paying our Section 108 loan payment, and then the amounts of money that goes to the city fair share allocations. Next slide, please. So um, you could see here that we always get more asks than we have available. Um, and so uh, we uh, were, we had 1.6 million available in CWG public services. Uh, the requests were double that amount. And, and in almost every case, it was almost double the amount of what uh, we had available. Next slide, please. So here are the recommendations for funding. Uh, this group are the group of uh, funds that we do for general public services. Uh, again, the purpose of CDBG is to help low and moderate income persons um, in, in the areas of decent housing, suitable economic uh, development, and also um, economic development. And so these would be the suitable uh, environment and uh, all of these projects would either be new or expanded to serve the low and moderate income citizens of Pasco County. Next slide, please. Uh, for CDBG public facilities and infrastructure, 
uh, we are recommending the following projects uh, and the list is there uh, from uh, uh, smaller projects with Lighthouse for the Blind to put in an automatic door to um, helping AMP skills um, buy a brand new building and everything in between. So we're really uh, a good list of projects, really helping East Side, West Side seniors, uh, a variety of different populations, uh, working with the Housing Authority to re-roof some of their uh, projects. Next slide, please. Uh, we are also recommending uh, several projects for funding out of home. And that would include uh, the um, Youth and Family uh, Alternative Spear Village. It's actually phase two of that. Uh, Habitat for Humanity on the east side, their Cove uh, project, helping them build uh, eight new houses. And then a new project, a new partner for us, the Housing and Educational Alliance, uh, coming in as a new CHODO, uh, also building some new single family homes. And then uh, starting for the first time uh, with us, we'll be putting together tenant-based rental assistance with the Coalition for the Homeless and St. Vincent de Paul, uh, $400,000 going into a helping uh, our homeless uh, stay housed for a couple of years with this funding. Again, this ties to the 3.8 million, really a lot of funding going to our homeless initiatives. Next slide, please. And then here are, this is our regular ESG funding. So we saw the 835,000 that we allocated, but here we've allocated uh, our regular amount, which is just around 240,000. It's basically for emergency shelter services to help these standing organizations and also our homeless management information system. Next slide. And here's um, the timeline. Uh, again, you could see why the timeline that I just shared with you for COVID-19 funds was so absolutely amazing is because um, we uh, start our uh, grant kickoffs in March and then uh, and we they have 40, uh, 30 days to respond to a request for proposals. We had an 11 person committee that um, met three times to review these uh, these projects, and then we're presenting, doing the first presentation to you on June 30th. This presentation also opens up our public comment period, which uh, is going to run for a little over 30 days. And then we'll be back on August 4th for a second approval, uh, a second public hearing and asking for your approval. And then our plan must be, our 2020 action plan must be submitted to HUD on August 16th. Uh, and these projects will start on 10-1, pending your approval, whereas, again, the COVID-19 projects will be able to start July 1. Next slide, please. If, if there's any questions or public comment, I'm happy to hear that. Any, any questions from the board? Oh, go ahead. Well, sorry, I'm back. Oh, Mike's back? Okay. Yeah, sorry. We're good. Any questions, comments, questions, comments? See none. I'm glad to see that um, funds go to the Cove or at the East Pasco Habitat. That's um, a great project. And a lot of great projects. I'm happy to see that. So thank you for that. And with that, I'll make a motion. Move to approve P20. Mr. Stark. We don't need an approval this time. There is oh. no approval. Oh, we don't. Um, this, this is just a, a public hearing. No approval necessary. We'll be back on August 4th for an approval. All right, thank you, Martin. Yeah, it, it does state a recommendation on here, so we follow. Oh, sorry. People. Not your fault. Yeah. Marcy? Yes. Can we approve it if we want to? Uh, no, we actually have to do uh, two public hearings and there needs to be a 30 day public comment period. So just, you know, just wait patiently and then you'll come back on August 4th and approve it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, Madam Clerk, do we have proof? Proof of publication for P21 was Tampa Bay Times, March 13, 2020, and March 20, 2020. Okay. And what team member, Mark Cabral, is that your group, I think? No, that's Eric's group. Oh, it's Eric's group? I apologize. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This is the right way. Wrong thing. My bad. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, P21. One minute. We'll, we'll speak to this item to be accessed or, or added to the uh, meeting now. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I'll say a petition to vacate portion of right away um, alongside Anklub Road and Fortune Street. Um, Anthony Galletto and Jerry Collier. No funding required. And has a recommendation of approval. And we have somebody on now. We're ready to roll. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, Heather Wolf, Real Property and Planning. The Real Property and Planning team has received the petition to vacate the platted right of way filed by Anthony Gato and Jerry Kohler. The right of way is located just south of State Road 54 along Anclote Road and Fortune Street. The petitioners own the parcels adjacent to the right of way sought to be vacated. They have requested this vacation to allow for the development of the adjacent properties. There are no objections to this petition and the team recommends approval. Thank you. Um, I think we don't have anybody signed up for this item because we didn't have any else, right? I don't show it's anyone not, signed up for this. Okay, no. it's in my district. I recommend approval. A motion of approval. By Commissioner Starkey. Second, Jack Mariano. I have a second by Commissioner Mariano. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. Uh, District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. We know you. Um, we're going on to P23, P23. Oh, P22, P I apologize, P22. Proof of publication, Tampa Bay Times, May 24, 2020, May 31, 2020. Heather Wolf, Real Property and Planning. The Real Property and Planning team has received a petition to vacate portion of platted right-of-way filed by GS Automotive. The right-of-way is located west of US 19, adjacent to Scenic Drive. The proposed area to be vacated consists of 2,744 square feet. The purpose of this vacation is to allow for the sale and redevelopment of the adjacent parcel into a take five oil change. There were no objections to this petition and the team recommends approval. Thank you, any questions? Um, uh, one quick question, can you put that picture back up? that you just had. So, so what are they doing there? The existing building that is currently there is an automotive repair shop. Uh, that building is going to be demolished and turned into a, a take five oil change. However, to reconfigure the lot properly so that the structure will fit and meet the uh, setback requirements. A vacation is required of um, a portion of the right of way that just kind of cuts through the, the front of that parcel. Okay, I, well, that's great uh, because they do a very nice job of landscaping. That'll really help that area aesthetically because it needs it. Okay, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, Jack Mariano. Mr. Mariano. Uh, thanks for keeping the map up. When I look at the sidewalk, it's being cut up. I'm sure you're going to make arrangements where the sidewalk's going to continue around as well when the new development comes in. Uh, yes, the existing plans that were approved by our planning and development team do allow for the sidewalk to continue. It's going to be landscaped with uh, different types of myrtles and some uh, shrubbery. Thank you. Move approval. Uh, just uh, one second. She just said something that caught my ear. Um, I thought we got away from using crepe myrtles as required trees and landscaping because half the year they're dead. I don't know that they're crepe myrtles. I will have to defer to uh, Miss Wilhite. So let's go ahead and let the applicant on then. Applicant's representative on. Ed Barber, you're unmuted. 
Hi, this is Barbara Wilhite again. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon again. So I do not have a landscape detail in front of me um, for the vacation, but um, we're going to meet the requirements. And as Mr. Starkey has said, Take Five does a nice job with their landscaping. Uh, we'll also uh, fix the sidewalks in that area. Um, but I'm just on because of the legal aspects of the vacation. Okay. Well, just note that I was pretty sure we got rid of the the, uh, the freight myrtles as part of required trees. They're not a tree. They're dead half the year. So. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Mariano, if I'm not correct, and a second by Commissioner Starkey. Madam Clerk, can you spell the roll? District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Uh, P23, do we have proof, please? P23, proof, proof of publication, Tampa Bay Times, May 24, 2020, and June 21, 2020. Okay, P23, go ahead. And can we get someone to put the PowerPoint up for P23? Thank you. And can we start back just one more slide? Well, okay. So PDD 20-7477 is a rezoning in the name of FAM LLC slash Moon Lake Acres. It is for rezoning from ER Estate Residential District to MF1 Multiple Family Medium Density District. Next slide. Of New Lake Road, approximately 1.25 miles south of State Road 52. Next slide, please. It is uh, the proposal is to rezone 45.03 acres from ER Estate Residential to MF1 Multiple Family Medium Density District in order to develop the site with a maximum of 162 single family attached townhomes. The surrounding area is characterized by a mix of single family and multiple family uses. Next slide, please. A little background on the subject. The site is part of an expired uh, MPUD, the Bay Point, Baywood Meadows Forest Point PUD Planning and Development. On August 9, 2005, the PUD Planning and Development Zoning District was repealed through ordinance number 05-32. And in accordance with the LDC section 521.1, a PUD plan that expires shall cause the property to revert to the zoning district that existed prior to the rezoning of the PUD. And this subject parcel had a zoning of ER Estate Residential District. The expired PUD included entitlements for of multifamily, attached single family, and detached single family dwellings. Next slide, please. Here's just a look at the surrounding zoning. Next slide, please. So the site is Res 6. Next slide, please. And access to the site will be from Moon Lake Road. And at the planning commission meeting, there was a little bit of concern over uh, traffic on Moon Lake Road. And so we added uh, one additional slide to the presentation. Next slide, please. Showing um, the improvements that will be made for Moon Lake Road. The widening is scheduled on the Pasco County Transportation CIP for school year 2026 27. Next slide, please. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Do you have any questions on P3 or is the applicant, is, I should ask too, is also the applicant on the line? The applicant is on the line. Barbara will. Okay. Ms. Wilhite, do you have anything to add before I go back to the board? Uh, I do not, unless there's some uh, question or public uh, comment, which I don't think there is. But I do have a team on board here um, somewhere in the WebEx re uh, world we live in. <laughs> okay, any questions from the, the board? Any comments from the board? Seeing that, I'll entertain a motion. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Mariano, and I mean, a, a motion by Commissioner Mariano and a second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. 
Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye, motion passes 4-0, thank you. Madam, uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk, just for the record, there was nobody signed up and there were no emails on this one as well, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, 24, do we have proof? P24, Tampa Bay Times, May 17, 2020, and June 21, 2020. I have no one signed up to speak on this item. Okay, nobody signed up to speak. Yeah, because I know that's why it was pulled. So. One time. Okay. Okay, the next item is PDB 20 23 in the name of CKB Development LLC slash Watergrass Promenade Business Center. It's the conditional use for the sale of alcoholic beverages, beer, wine, and liquor for package sales and on consumption in conjunction with the operation of a business center in an MPUD master plan unit development district. Next slide. It is located at the southeast and northeast corner of the intersection of Overpass Road and Curley Road. Next slide. And the approval would be for the sale of alcoholic beverages throughout uh, for on-premises consumption and package sales throughout the business center. And the surrounding area is characterized by a mix of residential and commercial uses. Next slide. Just a quick look at the surrounding zoning. Next slide. This comes to you with a approval or recommendation of approval with conditions. Great. Um, I know the applicant's representative is online if there's any questions, um, but any questions from the board? I mean, normally this is on consent, but I guess somebody had at one time had some questions, but they did not. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody did send an email into the planning commission, but we haven't received anything from them since or okay. had anybody Great. register. There you go. Any questions? See you now. No, a motion. A motion by Commissioner Mariano. Second. Second by Commissioner Wells. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. <laughs> District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 2, Chairman Moore. Aye. Motion passes. And that does it. Thanks, everybody, for a good meeting today. Everybody did a great job. And be safe. And we'll see you soon.